Welcome to Horton and Plants Oral Bites with your hosts, Kate Bootman, Will Murphy, and Carl Horton. I wasn't even born. Sweet Caroline. <laughs> ba, ba, ba. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, gentlemen. Uh. Whoa. Very nice. Done it. We're there. We're there. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Hope you're well. Uh, needless to say, I do hope we were watching the football last night and you are as excited as I am about the weekend. You will see we have the the naughty duo again on the panel. Hello, Will Murphy. Hello. Mr. Carl Horton. Hi, yeah. <laughs> and you'll see that we are thrilled. We are joined today by James from Chorus 3D. Hi, James. Hi. How are you doing? I'm very well, very well. Nice good, to good, be good. Here. Thank you. Yeah, well, we're really thrilled that you've joined us. Right, gentlemen, before we drag every bit of information out of James and he'll feel feel like he'll need a lie down, let's have a let's have a peek into your week so far, Carl Horton. Oh, okay. I'll make it keep it brief, hey Will. Gardening. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, why do you think okay. I've got this? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. See what I have to put up with, mate? Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, short short and sharp week, really. Um, Wales yesterday, uh, lots of COVID going around. Kids, uh, schools shut down because they're, they're the little, they're sort of spreading flu and all that sort of stuff. They're spreading COVID now. It's like that in Wales. It's, it's, it's all gone from England now. Uh, yeah, 400 cases in um, Newtown, apparently. Um, but yeah, lots of, lots of still again, busy, lots of new referrals coming in, very busy with that. Um, and then lots of meetings, sorting out all the courses, getting those organized. So, um, I know we were talking a little bit off air, James, about the nurses course and that you guys are sort of setting out. So a little bit on the restorative course, getting all those really eager associates involved in, in, in that sort of things. Yeah. Uh, and all that jazz. Um, and then today um over at the lovely sally park so not too far away um uh, and then of course watching the uh rushing home from newtown to to watch the england game uh i think i've aged a little bit i don't know why because uh, i'm not a massive football fan but I, d I did find it uh enjoyable um certainly my kid did he was screaming screaming and screaming at the uh at the screen and I got a text off my other son saying that he'd watched it as well. So he's supposed to be doing his exams. So hopefully he'll still pass. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, been, that's been about it in a nutshell. One thing I'm not too keen on is the Atomic Kitten so song. I much prefer uh, It's Coming Home. But you know. anyway, I digress and I'll shut up. I'll keep it short and sweet. That's well, it. Thank you. Thank no you, problem. Carl Horton. Uh, Will Murphy, Hello. share your week. Yeah, likewise. Very uh, busy again. Thankfully, this is one of my four-day uh, weeks, which always makes oh, me happy. I know, bit of a bit of a part timer. So, um, <laughs> and it, of course, it was finished off with somebody squeezing in a, a lower six extraction, sort of last thing today. Hence, oh. I'm late. You know what happens last thing when you start going to take out a lower six? And you hear a nice snapping sound. Um, you know, so pretty pretty standard for the end of day. Uh, <laughs> apart from that, yeah, like everyone else, even though I'm um, Born in Wales with Irish parents. Um, yeah, I even brought myself to support England uh, last night. Oh, yeah. I've li lived here for 30 something years. So, you know, <laughs> I'm almost a naturalized Brummie now, aren't I? So, uh, <laughs> without the accent, I don't think. Except you when I go back when I go back to Cardiff, they're like, oh, you sound proper Brummie. You do. <laughs> so, uh, that's my Cardiff accent. So, um, yeah, that's it. And I, I agree with you, mate. Yeah, I don't like the Atomic Kitten song. Sweet Caroline's a winner, obviously, but yeah. it gets in gets in your ear, doesn't it? Now you can't little just, earworm. Yeah, <laughs> just hearing it all the time now. So yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go. And um, yeah, just off to the Cotswolds tomorrow. Don't like to boast about Ooh. it. Just throw it in, you know. Very nice. <laughs> but you will. <laughs> but I will. Yeah, don't want to look smug. But um, yeah, there you go. But I've got to I've got to keep my voice down because my. 25 and 19 year old sons are in the next room so as soon as they hear that i'm leaving the house for a couple of days right it's, you know you know what's going to happen don't you? yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Gone out on the whatsapp group the, the text thing will be going straight away the old man the old man's out yeah well they wow. do when you're in well i know yeah i know they do yeah that's the thing no respect you see for their elders i blame the parents <laughs> oh so there you go that's my that's my week Fantastic. Very well, it's nice. good to hear that uh, 
uh, you're both still very busy. I mean, it seems to be a theme. I mean, the practice is still, you know, we're going in and they're just getting busier and busier, which is fantastic. You know, it is really, really good. I think they were expecting a bit of a lull, but I think it's gone to the other end of the spectrum. Well, that's certainly our experience anyway, I'd say. <gasps> Brilliant. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. James. Yeah, it's because I want to give James as much time as he possibly can to chat. That's why. <laughs> James, please tell everybody out there. Um, I know we've, uh, we've uh, well, we've met online, obviously, and we've had a couple of chats. Could you share with us um, what brought our online meeting um, to fruition? Well, I suppose um, the brilliant system that is Chrome brought us to this point. Um, <laughs> A shameless plug there by me. Um, <laughs> plug away, yeah, mate. That's what it was, yeah. So um, I suppose I've known Carl, and apparently I've met Will before, um, but there was a memory <laughs> at the period of time, as well as a very large barbell that I wasn't involved in, apparently. <laughs> but, it's all a bit um, hazy. So through the ITA, and the nice team from Glontology, I suppose how we know each other. Um, yeah. And we hadn't seen each other for a long time, or... or uh, spoken for a long time, and one of our uh, reps, Amanda, who covers England for us, with a company called Course 3D. So Course 3D is a digital-based company, very much sitting in the sphere of guided surgery. That's our core core business in that. Um, spoke to Carl and yourself, and um, that kicked off a conversation about how guided surgery could be of use in your business in Full Arch. And two years ago, I came across a system called Chrome Guided Smile in Row Dental Laboratory in Cleveland. And it was purely by accident. I was actually in America on a 3D printing event by August, August De La Vera. Wonderful name. I always think it's like a movie star name. <laughs> yeah. And he's quite a character. Um, and I was attracted to travel all the way to the States to find out about 3D printing because I couldn't find anything really in the UK that wasn't really company based. So I decided I would take myself off um, on a bit of a jolly um, to freezing cold Cleveland. My God, it's so cold there, <laughs> last than ever I went. And um, in a room in a beautiful laboratory were all these wonderful gadgets. Um, and I'm an absolute magpie, so it was heaven <laughs> for me. And I got to see a whole lot of 3D printers and hear from the companies. It was a really clever, clever event. How many times can you imagine in the UK and Ireland that all these different companies would be brave enough to sit in one room and let dentists go and hope and poke um, and have such an open and, open and honest forum? It was fantastic. But in the back of the room, I seen this little metal guide and me being me, being a bit nosy, um, within about, and um, typically Irish, I was getting a private tour within about 30 minutes um, <laughs> and got a whole tour of the whole facility all about surgical guides and I was, wasn't there for that reason. And I pestered the guys, Alan Banks and BJ Klawoski, who's a, a family run business. And soon I did the first case outside of the States in Ireland. And that first case, so I was sort of doing more and more and more full arch immediate load just in my own practice really which I sold and I was getting very frustrated and I was getting frustrated because I wasn't getting consistent enough results I was having difficulty getting technicians coming chair side and all the things that sit within full arch immediate load where you can have problems and that mostly relates to the planning aspect of things and it was taking me really a long time to do cases you know patient in at nine o'clock not leaving to four or five o'clock. The place looking like a bomb site. Nurses wondering if they were getting home to get their children picked up from school, <laughs> when the dinner was going to be made. The technician running up and down the stairs, his room looking like a bomb site. Um, and I was like, that's it. I am done with this. Um, and my first case took me two and a half hours using Chrome. And I thought to myself, it's too good to be true. This is a bit of a freaky. Now, I did the first case with the clinical guy sitting on an iPhone. That's how I did it. Brilliant. I will admit it. Um, but using the guides, was, it was so slick. Slick from start to finish. And I can go over the various steps if we have time. But essentially, that was the first case. 
with no clinical technician required chair side. And I did another couple and it was repetitive. It was the same process and I was getting consist that consistency was coming back in again because the planning was consistent. But what I was finding was that the execution was consistent clinically. And so I then started asking a couple of pals to have a go. They had a go, results were similar. So it then became a commercial conversation, really at the start of 2020, end of 2019. And just as we were really starting to get up and running, getting the company set up, COVID hit. And then all hell broke loose and we had to close the company down again. Mm. Um, so we've really only got started properly in the sort of Q4 of 2020 and we're running now. So we're, we're up and running well. And that in a very long way is how we have had a conversation um, mm -hmm. because yeah. hopefully Chrome can offer you guys some solutions to streamlining and systemizing full arch workflow, um, which it does extremely well. So c can you sort of encapsulate the clinical process yeah. um, for me? Because again, I don't know anything about this, so I'm fascinated to hear how it would work in my yeah. hands. Yeah. So, so Chrome is, it's an open system, first of all. So um, it covers all implant systems that, that have a guided kit, essentially. So that's the first thing. It, it's accessible to all implant users. Um, it provides a totally systemized process for the dentist and their patient from the collection of the data right through to the providing or the provision of the final restoration in a set price. So we provide one price that takes you through that journey, no matter the implant system. And we start off with data collection. So we talk about the tripod of data, which are photographs, CBCT and the photographs. And we show you, that is all systemized. We tell you what we need for the different type of case that you're doing. We then take that data and we put it through an in-house planning process. And from that, we then get you onto an online planning meeting. And that online planning meeting takes place with different planners, but essentially they're all digital planner. Some of them are dental technicians, some of them are dentists, but that case has gone through several hands to get to that point. So that is a team's meeting. You then confirm or change or alter the case. Dentist signs it off. We can come on those meetings because guided surgery is new for a lot of people, especially for full arch. And then four weeks later, what comes in a box to you is everything that you need to carry out that case. So we start with data collection, planning, manufacture and then the clinical execution is pretty much lego so it is stage by stage it is it's setting the various components in place how you work through each of those components so you get a, it's a stacked guide system it's a bone fixated stack guide system it's made of metal so you, you get lots of visibility you get lots of access to the site it's rigid it's held in place it won't break because with plastic you have to over bulk it to make it strong enough you do not want to guide break in during a full arch case and within that that leads you through your um bone if there's bone reduction to be done it leads you through that it leads you through your extractions it leads you through your implant placement it leads you through your abutment placement which this is all guided it leads you then to your temporary cylinder placement, it leads you then through to your pickup on a pre-made provisional bridge. And then it takes you through to what's called the rapid appliance, which you pick up at the time of surgery. The patient goes away, go through the normal healing process. They come back in and then you do what's called a rapid transfer, which is using this rapid device, which is a printed copy of the provisional bridge. And you can then finish the case in two visits an arch would take you about two 30-minute appointments, and we then send you back a uh, full zirconia final bridge. And all of that is a fixed cost. So that's essentially the process. So with the um, provisional, on, that's delivered on the day of surgery, presumably. Yeah. So you still need a technician to finish still, that up? 
no, 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 no. So the whole idea it takes about 10 minutes to do the conversion, not okay. four hours. So this will be a bridge with um, holes for the cylinders in place? Totally, yeah. And you're picking that up with some coal cure acrylic or something? Yeah, we provide the material. It's an American material call, uh, made by a company called Tobe. Um, uh, the name of it now has just given me a blank. Um, but that material, it basically binds very well to printed materials because the bridge is a printed bridge. It used to be milled PMMA, but the printed materials have come on so well now that we now print that bridge. And then you basically pick that up on the tamper cylinders using the material. Yeah. Okay. You wouldn't be able to tell it's printed because I mean no. I'm I'm in a slightly different position because I've seen it. Will we yeah. had Amanda come down to uh, Newtown and show us, mm. and uh, the the bridge, the provisional bridge. I don't, I don't know whether I'd want to change it. <laughs> it looked not obviously you have to because uh, of the healing and everything, but it looked fantastic. So it was. Yeah, really no, nice. we got really nice feedback about the printed bridge um, and the provisional stage. You know, even the slickest people in the world, um, you know, it depends how your practice is set up. Like our market, let's be very honest, our market is general practitioners who want to streamline that process. You know, the massive big clinics that just do full arts, they have a very specific process that they work through and they it works extremely well for them. Yeah. Um, but they, they, this is for the practice who has to go to the hassle to get them, the technician. Technicians are going to hate me. Uh, I'm actually quite an expert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you're, you're, you're a marked man, I think. Uh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> See the light, the laser light. Uh. Um, but um, it, it's really just to streamline things. So, you know, to give you an example, we have just had some work done by one of the dental corporates. And their analysis is really interesting and that is so when they were doing full arch immediate load conventionally they worked out all their costs and all their chair side time okay their their chair side time conventionally was 20 hours their chair side with chrome was nine okay and that allowed them to double their early profit okay yeah that's where it creates huge efficiencies within practices. And I was always, at the start, I was skeptical. You know, is this as accurate? There's lots of bad news about guided surgery out there. Guided surgery's come on a huge amount, a huge way, and a very, sorry, a very long way, should I say. And this is incredibly accurate. It, it is sometimes mind boggling just how accurate this is when you're using angle developments because the, the rotation is also guided on, 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 the, on, the, on the kit. And are you on four implants, six, or whatever is appropriate? The dentist wants eight. They can have eight. If the dentist wants four, they can have four. Because ultimately, it's the dentist that signs the case off. Okay. Um, so it's really dependent on bone availability and what the dentist themselves want. Mm. So, because sometimes it, with the best will in the world, you know, with a, a full arch where you're removing teeth, sometimes the landscape can yep. can alter quite radically. So where you perhaps thought in your head you were going to place your implant, um, you know, it can throw you a curveball or it's certainly in my hands. And so my implant is probably not, you know, may not be going in the site that I want it to go in. Presumably, do you need to add extra implants in advance if you think that's likely to be the case? You can in your planning. I'm going to give you my own personal experience of this. So I've done over 60 arches of this and I haven't changed one implant position. I think I think it, from what we were talking about, uh, I think that comes down to the, the planning stage and the CBCT data and, and the planners who you've got that have done all the cases, understanding whether you're going to get a potential issue or not. Because it was something like, like yourself. I was a little bit, no, um, you know, I'm not sure and a bit, a bit hesitant. And then we talked online and we chatted about it. And I thought, well, that fills a gap, certainly for me, because in one of the practices, I cannot get a technician to come down there at all. It's so difficult. We're, we're in the middle of nowhere. And um, it, it just fits that gap for us. And then to have Amanda come around and show us how it works, it was actually kind of like, just makes absolute sense. That just, very slick. What I really I mean, like as well is 
because obviously it's something quite new, is that massive, huge printout that you do <laughs> that yeah. you can blue tack to the wall Sorry, that, that with, with my failing eyesight, even I can see it. Yeah. Uh, listen, it's, the, the way that they've put it together is really clever. They've done, yeah. done I think it's almost 14,000 cases. And they just are, the, one thing I love about the company is their constant strive to improve, listen to feedback, and adjust and alter what, how they set things up. And, you know, they haven't come out and said, this is absolutely perfect in 100% of cases. You still need to have such surgical skill. And very importantly, because I go chair side and a lot, I've been chair side in about 150 cases now. It's knowing your implant kit and knowing your implant system. That's really important because it, because if you don't know though how the nuances of your implant system work and the little tricks that you need to get them stable and the, how the abutments work and all those things, that can really add to the time and add to the learning process. But I have, I have no question about the accuracy of the system. The system works extremely well. Where the, some of the issues have been, have been and I, is the knowledge of the clinicians in terms of the use of their guided kits. And so as we have grown in the UK and Ireland, so one of the things that we do is every first case, we will go chair side. And that is usually old sucker me here. So that means me spinning about all over the place. But what we have found by doing that is we have 97, I think it is, percent of reusing customers because we get them off on the right foot. Because it's not often the chrome that's the issue, it's it's the little hand skills of using the guides and using yeah. their implant system. So so that's where the key of it is and team training. Mm. And it takes a little James, time. James, there was something that um, both you and Amanda mentioned mm. to, to us, both on uh, with when we had the online meeting and when Amanda met us um, a couple of weeks ago. And I think it's really key for the clinicians out there. The clinicians build up a relationship with their lab technicians, and I think that's fair to say. Yeah. Um, you've, got, you've got a good team of lab technicians, but they're with you right from the planning stage, aren't they? So they're, they're there you know, you, you sort of meet your clinician and they, they take that journey with you all the way through. All, all the way through. And yeah. we urge our customers to work with, there might be with one particular planner. Yeah. So say, for example, you start with a planner, let's say Liz is, and Liz is one of them. Your first meeting with Liz might take 45 minutes to cover an arch. But I can guarantee by your fourth or fifth meeting, you'll be down to 15 minutes. But she'll know exactly what you want. She'll know your nuances, what your restrictions are, what you feel comfortable with. And your meeting time decreases and decreases and decreases. And therefore, you, you build these relationships with the team. So we have our own team here. There's a team in the States. And so it's not, there's a, there's a concern amongst dentists that whenever they hand over their planning, to somebody that they lose control. That is yeah. not the case. It's very much not the case. And we get that because we do single guides as well. Mm -hmm. like I spend loads of time on, on designing and helping dentists understand how single guides work. Um, and that's a big fear that they have. They just want this control bit, which is mm -hmm. fine, but they can outsource a lot of that to save themselves an awful lot of time and still have the control when it comes to the physical decision make, mm -hmm. making bit. Have you done any dual arch cases yet, upper and lower yeah. at the same time? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, you t do you tend to um, mix the upper and the lower arch? So you might think about zirconia on the upper arch and then sort of PMMA on the yeah. lower or? So probably if you asked me that five, four or five years ago, I would, I would never have done similar materials. Yeah. Because of the planky noise, because of the increased risk of chipping, that type of thing. But, but I think with the zirconia and... You know the, the the monolithic zirconias that are yeah. now produced, and the staining and glazing and surface work that can be done on those, they can look absolutely fantastic. And my preferred route, and I've spoken funny to a couple of very large full art users who do a lot of restorative work, and they are now very happy to go zirconia versus zirconia. Interesting. Yeah. And, yeah. And the 
it, it, I suppose it comes down to personal preference. It's that fear of the unknown because, you know, some people will have had bad experiences, but the bad experiences some in my hands have been bonded work versus bonded work and the chipping that occurs. Yeah. But I haven't seen that transferred across to the monolithic zirconias, certainly as frequently. Um, yeah. They are a bit noisy, let's be honest, whenever they click together. Um, but personally, for me now, I would have no hesitation in going draconian and draconian. Yeah. I mean, the monolithic, I'm using, I've been using that more and more. It's yeah. just, uh, it's a beautiful material, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Right. You know, the, the aesthetics on it are stunning as well. Yeah. And I, I find patients find it, I don't know, I seem to find it easier to keep clean when it's well designed. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's just a really nice, hygienic nice to the soft tissue and um, it's just a lovely material to use so uh, when you go to um deliver the definitive prosthesis is that usually about three months later or something like that or it, it i suppose it will depend, depend. Well, mo most people will be going at about 16 weeks on okay. the customers that, that we deal with i know other people have a thing they want to leave it for six months um but i don't think there's any golden rule there and you sort of re-scanning to pick up soft tissue shrinkage and things like that? Yeah. So via the rapid appliance, so the, what the, it's hard to explain without showing you images, but the, the rapid appliance, you, you pick up the new soft tissue profile within that. So the rapid appliance basically gives the technician all the information that they need to go to final. So it's a, a copy of the provisional, so they can alter and change it so if the patient wants longer teeth they can add composite to it if they want to reduce it they can reduce it they equilibrate it against whatever's on the lower they it is all the implant positions because you've picked them up all at the time of surgery if you're unsure about that you can re-pick them up if you want to and then inside on the top of the rapid you then lift uh, a wash impression to lift the soft tissue that in conjunction with some photographs when we provide that to the technicians, they can then go ahead and go straight to finish. Yeah, I was going to say, it was almost like a reline. That's what yeah. how I envisaged it. Yeah. yeah. And I suppose the whole thing now, you know, can, can you do, you know, we've had some people try to send us into oral scans or full arches. At this stage, we're not of the belief that that is good enough. Um, and some people who want to go down that more traditional route to finish the case, they can do that with, conventional impressions, uh, verification jigs and all that type of stuff. You can still go down that process if you want, but certainly the vast majority of the customers are using the rapid appliance. It's unique to Chrome. Um, and then the next interesting thing that's coming along is the whole photogrammetry and how that fits within it. And that's a, that's a huge interest to me personally, because what I have seen is incredibly impressive. Isn't it? Well, I think that's, is that the sort of Evo dental model that they're using at the moment they're 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 down the line of photogrammetry yeah that, that's so, pr pretty impressive yeah it's you know like the, the the workflows i suppose are two different workflows there's one the guys in the states use which is they, they do the implants they do the placement they do the 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 photogrammetry at the time of surgery yeah. they have an e1 and vision tech printer sitting in the background of a technician furiously designing the bridge an hour and a half later out comes the bridge they pop it in and they haven't done any impressions and then when it comes to the finish they're basically copying everything on interior scanners and photogrammetry again or there's you can put a temporary in conventionally and then finish it using photogrammetry at the end and, you know, we, we did a course with New Life Teeth in, Edin, in Belfast, a guy called Stuart Lutton, and he's been using photogrammetry um, now for a, for a while. He's got a fantastic practice with a beautiful lab, he's working on, and, um, you know, watching them and the results they're having using photogrammetry w w was a really nice thing to see. You know, they really have taken the technology and worked with it and smoothed their workflows. Um, and I just think there's there's something there that photogrammetry offers a lot in regards to full art work. Yeah, yeah, definitely agree with that. But it, it, it seems to take out all the bits that the patient hates and the bits that the dentist hates as well. Yeah, out, out of the whole process, which yeah. is you know. Yeah, you know, uh, like you know, uh, you know, as I said it to to, so, to somebody who's talking about Chrome, you know, I'd say, what do you want to do? Do you want the patient in your chair for two and a half, or if you get started, maybe three and a half for the first case? And I can get you can slick that right down to about two hours an arch. 
does the patient want to go through that process or do they want to be in your surgery for six or seven hours and have this big gap in the middle where the technician's working on tra- doing the transfer? It's a no-brainer. If I was a patient, what would I want to do? So I think from a patient perspective, there's, there's huge advantages there. And for efficiencies for a practice, massive advantages. In, in terms of the type of bridges that you're delivering, I mean, I've kind of progressed over the years um, from, you know, what's essentially been a screw in denture, you know, horseshoe denture to, um, you know, like the sort of Createch sleeve bridges. Yeah, beautiful. Is there any uh, any way of producing something like that? Only because once I've taken off these screw indentures a few weeks later, it's all pretty unpleasant underneath. So mm-hmm. I found that these Createch bars that the patient can access, you know, really helps with, you know, oral hygiene and just keeping the whole thing looking smart. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. I, you know, I think that one, if we go back to my journey within this, that way was exactly the same as you fit in full arch acrylic hybrid style bridges. And let's be honest, they get a bit monkey after a while. And, and you know, patient comes back in a year or two, they're stained, they're porous. If their fit surface isn't designed well, it's a bit of a mess. We've all made those mistakes, but things have moved on. And you're right, some of these materials are fantastic, Createch, fantastic company. Um, and it's really down to the personal preference of the clinician. Our fixed price process is a final zirconia bridge because that's a very reg- almost regimented process that we can follow. When you're getting into some of these other really bespoke style bars and stuff, the price becomes more difficult to keep it contained. And so our message to the market really is that we can, we can fix your cost for your full art work. If you want to go all fancy dancy at the end and go outside of that, then that's a conversation we can have. And for some people, what they do is they take it using the Chrome system through the provisional stage because they can know that that bit's systemized and then they finish it as they want. That's fine. You can do that. But what we've found is that so many have liked the final bridges that, that we're producing for them. They understand it doesn't take an awful lot of time and they're still having nice tissue responses, cleansable bridges, so they're happy. So it, it's, I suppose it's, we can't be all things to all people um, because part of the, the lovely thing about Chrome is that it, it's a systemized process from end to end. And how, what time, what's the turnaround time for uh, the second when, when you're taking your rapid yeah. And then you're you're waiting for the, the new bridge to come back. What what's the turnaround time for that? We're we're trying to keep that within three weeks. Three weeks. So that's pretty quick then. Yeah, yeah. And then I mean I'm what I'm thinking about is if there's any issues. So if there was an issue then with the patient's permanent bridge, you've got hold of the provisional bridge. So you can pop that back on again and then any issues. Yeah. That, so you still have that. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. And, and um, even with the rapid appliance, you can even, although it's fully white, looks a bit crap in terms of, you know, there's not much, there's no color in it really. It's just a blank white thing. Um, the, you, you can even get it made with pink on it. So you have it as a backup temporary. Yeah. Do you have a problem with a fracture on a distal extension or something happens? You, you can actually get the rapid made with pink on it. Um, it that material isn't as strong as what the provisional is made of, but it gets you out of jail free almost. Yeah. Three things like that that they've thought about, and um, which are quite clever. Brilliant. It is very, it's, very good. And, and I mean, the case that I saw, there was, there was a little bit of bone removal, and I heard you mention I was listening uh, for once, I was listening very carefully, <laughs> and I heard, I heard you say that uh, sometimes you're not always removing bone, so that you can do pretty much all all types of full arch. Um, yeah, so, yeah, you can do FP3s. Yeah, down to, to now, what what they do is FP1, which is what's called Chrome Natural. Yeah, slightly different planning process, slightly different surgical process in regards to the steps. But um, and probably more technically difficult for the dentist to manage um, yeah. on your side. So it's not one that we probably encourage beginners to start with. But the you you can do you can do the full plethora of cases with it. 
Um, there's no limitation. Some people just don't want to remove bone. Absolutely get it. Um, but for some cases, you have to, or you're not going to get enough restorative space. Um, so it, that all comes out in the planning. Some You know straight away, this is going to be a chrome natural case, and we go down that planning process. Other cases will be submitted for a natural, but actually they haven't considered the fact there's a big vertical defect in the middle of it all. Mm -hmm. And actually when you sit down and look at planning that case and you go from a restorative lead process back and you look at where everything's going, a chrome natural, unless you rebuild that vertical, is going to look like a dog's dinner. So uh, some of that planning can change at that point. Ah, brilliant, thank you. Sorry about that. Dog's just attacking somebody. <laughs> James, can I can I ask you a question about something separate? Just before we came on air, I mean, for those of you out there, um, this isn't just what you do. And I mean, it's very clear that you're very passionate about this. Give us an insight on some of the other things that you do. Yeah, yeah. So I suppose I, I was a dental practitioner, pra practitioner. I own my own practice, a referral practice here in Northern Ireland. Um, based right on the border. And I ran that with my wife for... 12 years, I think it was. There, there, 10 years, 10 years it was. But I sold it. I sold it to um, Bupa, whatever it was prior to Bupa. Oasis, that was. It. Can't even remember now. Mm -hmm. And basically, I came out of that um, over a three year period. And during that three year period, we, and slightly just before that, actually, we established a company called Quintess Denta. Quintess Denta is a distribution business in dentistry, a surgical distribution business. And we, uh, supply uh, neodent so we're partnered with Strymon so we do their neodent portfolio and some of their Strymon portfolio such as the bone and medentica and that type of stuff in Ireland but we also supply motors hand pieces drapes anything really that you need to get you going in a, in a surgical practice so anthigital wrenches all of that, absolutely yeah, yeah. great price for anybody in the podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, all of that, we, we, we do all of that. Um, and then we decided, or I decided when I went to America, that 3D printing was going to be the next thing. The magpie and me thought, what a great idea. <laughs> yeah. And um, when I went there, I decided that we were going to do Chrome as well as uh, 3D printing. So we, of course, 3D. And that company, at the center of it is is what is my passion, which is guided surgery, but we also do intraoral scanners and printers, like setting up uh, denture labs for printing, 3D printing, all of that sort of stuff. We sell that all over the UK and Ireland. And I also, during COVID, took a, like everybody else, took a bit of a brain fog and I decided that I would open up a teaching center. So we just opened a couple of months ago, or actually officially opened only last week, week before the Ellis Brown Centre, which is a seven and a half thousand square foot um, teaching centre in Northern Ireland with live surgery, um, AV, all the bells and whistles. And we just have started to run our first courses there now. Um, so that's where I'm sitting at the minute. Um, and but as well as that, I also do some mentoring. And as well as that, I do that's a little peripatetic. Implant yeah. surgery. So, is that it? Do, do you ever <laughs> yeah. sleep? <laughs> yeah. Do you ever sleep, James? I do actually. I sleep, I sleep very well because I'm absolutely knackered most of the time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but, um, yeah. But I love I it. Bet. You know, I, I, I just, I, I love it. You know, hmm. um, I realised, I suppose, dentistry, sitting down doing dentistry after about seven years of practice ownership wasn't going to be for me because I don't like working to the clock. Um, and I sort of, I, I like to do different things. And so it, it's been, on, dentistry has been an amazing journey for me. It's been really good to me. We've had really tough times, but we've had fantastic times. And, you know, the opportunities that it's given us in, in what we're doing now in the Ellis Brown Center, the opportunities within Course 3D, it's, it's really exciting. And although dentists are a total weird bunch, um, there are the odd nugget out there that are quite nice, really. So, um, <laughs> there's, so there's some out there. Yeah, there's <laughs> one or two. The odd one. Yeah. When I find one, I'll let you know. No, boy, <laughs> joking, joking. So, so I love it. Yeah. Brilliant. 
So That's do fantastic. You, out of all of that, I know it's really, really mean of me to ask, but I shall. Being do you have a, I will, I will. Do you have a favourite? So all those things that you do, I mean, Ooh, you can hear it's like a favourite child, isn't it? I know. I know you've said your love for um, guided surgery, so I hear that. I mean, the education side with your training centre, do you sort of lean towards one? Um, I think I, I'm going to be a bit... Um, want to ask if I can have two because yes. I think they're both combined I look at what I suppose guided surgery and the digital aspect of that has has done for me so uh, when I got involved really heavily involved three years ago now I was about to give up dentistry like I had placed enough implants to do my lifetime I had done all of that I had bought all the tools but I'd had enough of it and what what it did for me was it re-energized me within within dentistry as a career for me personally. And that's where it started. It didn't start commercially. And, and I just thought, this technology is fantastic. How do we get a handle on it? How is it going to help us? Because we were talking off air beforehand. There's so much misinformation. There's so many people really struggling with digital workflow. Um, where do they fit within that? And where does their practice fit within it? And, and so the first question I ask anybody if they ask me about digital is, well, what do you want it to do? Where, what do you want to produce with this? And, and where do you feel it fits at the minute? And that's a conversation to be had because only then can you really start to focus down on where you as a dentist or a practice fits within the work, within this thing that everybody calls a digital workflow. But, but that totally re-energized my career. So that's why I love it. But I've also loved surgery. And so I get the surgical benefit and the digital benefit now together in, in guided surgery. So that's probably number one. Alongside that, and maybe slightly behind it, is being able to teach people about it. And I, I really do, I've always enjoyed, that's why I joined the ITA, I've always enjoyed that bit of teaching and sharing. Although most of what I talk about is a load of rubbish. I have a bit <laughs> of fun doing it. And I like to think that the people I talk to about it have a wee bit of fun as well. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can impart some of that, the bit that I've spent my time and career so far getting better and better and better at and making loads of boo-boos and loads, loads of mistakes. But being honest about that and saying, you know, actually this is a journey that you can go on. Um, mm -hmm. so, so those are the two bits I enjoy. And Larry Brown, so we've named the centre after Larry Brown, who is an ATI fellow, dental That's technician. Nice. Just an amazing man. Oh yeah. So so what our ethos and the centre is to live what Larry was all about. And Larry was all about sharing knowledge, bringing the underdog up, um, mm. and and you know, Larry used to wake up every day, and every day was a was a new opportunity to do something better or to learn something, and and that's what we're trying to do because dentistry doesn't have that. I don't believe in enough. We don't have enough people like, like Larry Brown sitting in dentistry who is was generous to a fault with his time and his effort to really educate the younger dentists coming through. Um, so that's where, the, that's where the excitement lies, I suppose. Yeah, well, well it done. sounds yeah. like you're, you're, you're certainly doing that, <clears throat> James. So I would imagine anybody that crosses your path are very, very lucky, I would say. I'll have to ask me why you thought I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, I'm afraid to say we really have reached that magical time yet again this evening. I'd like to say on behalf of, of these two gentlemen, James, thank you so very, 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 very much for joining yeah. us this evening. And yeah. I hope you will consider joining us again. And um, what do you, do you tell want us to be back? More. <laughs> we do. We, we, we do want we you do. back. We talked about We'd verbal diarrhea off air. <laughs> I did warn you that it's a trait that I could suffer from. Mate, that's flown by. That's <laughs> it's, absolutely it has, flown by. It really has. has yeah. flown no, by. no, no, no. no. It's, you did, I've really enjoyed no. it. Yeah, it's been superb. Thank you. It really has been fantastic. Yeah. Obviously, uh, well, thank you very much, Carl. Thank you very much. Well, hope you have a fantastic Pleasure. time away, you cheeky thank little devil. You. Yay! And um, obviously, all of you have a fantastic weekend. I don't need to say. I hope you're going to be doing something very special on <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Have a, 
Have a lovely weekend, everybody. Yeah. Cheers, James. Cheers, Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.